Hey everyone, Chelsea here from So Simple Home. Today we are making a coffee cozy. So it's a fun little cozy that goes around your mug, help keep your hand from getting burned, or maybe you like cold drinks, helps you from getting your hand cold. Um, this is a great DIY and it makes a really great gift as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll need to do is to grab the pattern. Um, this one's just on some scrap paper, but we have a really nice pattern. You can get the link in the description. It's free. I will say right now you're going to want the pattern because Coffee Cozy um, shapes are not easy to achieve. <laughs> I have worked on this pattern for a little while just to get the shape right because of the way cups are made, um, that the top is wider than the bottom. The cozy has to be a particular shape, and to really get that shape down, it can be really frustrating. I've edited this pattern multiple times to get the right shape so that it will work for you. So it's ready, so make sure you go get it. So once you have the pattern, you're going to need to cut out a front, a back or inside, I guess, lining, if you will. Just get some wrinkles out, and then... Um, the batting okay and because we did this one um, with the gingham on the front we're gonna do the orange as the gingham on the front this time um, as for your batting when you're picking your materials things to think about um, this pattern is for hot things right nice hot coffee or cocoa um, so if it's too hot it could potentially melt your materials so I would highly suggest you stay away from anything polyester. Um, work with cottons, cottons are great. 100% um, cotton is always wonderful or just a very, very low polyester, um, but use that at your own risk. As for batting, um, you can use, I like wrap and sap. This is what I use for my microwave projects, for my microwave potato bag, for my microwave tortilla warmer, for my microwave um, bowl cozy. I always use wrap and sap. Um, there's also, what is it called? Um, Insul Bright, I think is what it's called. Um, and it's an insulating material. You could use that as well. So it's totally up to you which one you use. Um, I think that's it. If you plan to use this in the microwave at all, I would go 100% cotton on everything, including your thread. If you're not, then you're fine. Okay, so when you are cutting out this pattern, um, if you're not using the same two pieces for your lining and your um, main fabric, make sure that they are cut mirror image. If you don't cut the mirror image, you'll see that these do not line up. You can see over here and over here. That is intentional. Um, so you want them to be mirror images so that they'll line up correctly. All right, lastly, we've got our little batting piece. Now you'll notice here on my batting, it, I actually cut away from the sides about a quarter of an inch on each side. And I'm gonna line up this edge all the way here, but not this edge over here. In fact, I am gonna trim this down just a little bit more. Okay, why am I doing that? Well, um, there's a lot of bulk and your seams will be too bulky really to turn. You won't like it if the batting is all the way to the edge. So this just gives you um, just a little ease. And then I do put it all the way over here because I do wanna catch the batting in some of the stitching so that when I turn it, the batting stays in place. But this side here, we're leaving open. So I don't want the batting there because again, it will just be too much bulk. So for sewing purposes, I will add a few pins just to keep my three layers together. So I have my main layer, which is the orange one, my gingham, which is my lining, and then my batting. Now I'm gonna put it in my machine and I'm gonna sew at a quarter of an inch, but this side I'm gonna leave completely open. For the back stitch, we know is the edge of our presser. Get to the end, 
turn my corner, sew across my batting to the other side, turn, continue sewing. threads out of the way here from the beginning. All right. Cut my threads. So this is kind of what it looks like. You can see I've sewn over my batting here. So I'm actually going to come in here to where my batting is and I'm going to trim away that extra piece of batting just to get rid of some of the bulk. I'm going to cut my corners. Same over here, I'll just trim. So my, that's kind of what my cozy looks like at the moment. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it right side out. So I'm going to open up this side, kind of push this edge in. Okay, once I get it started, I'm just gonna take out a paintbrush and use that paintbrush to kind of help me move my material through to the other side. Okay, I always have like a paintbrush or a dowel or pencil or something to help me when I'm turning things like this. All right, let's turn. Now I'm gonna put my paintbrush back in there and poke those corners, turn it here. And I like to kind of run it along the seam so everything gets poked out. Then I'll take my little iron here and I'll just press everything down. So all those seams and stitches are nice and pressed. Like that. Now I'm going to take this open edge and I'm just going to turn it just enough that it's going to keep the raw edges on the inside. And then I'll just press it real quick so that I'll stay in place. All right, I'm ready for my Velcro. Now you're gonna need about a two inch piece of Velcro or hook and loop tape as it's normally called. Um, and remember, this cozy is going to wrap around your cup and overlap in the back. So you're going to need a piece of Velcro on this side here, and then a piece of Velcro on this side here so that they can overlap. So one on opposite edges. So for our opening here, I'm actually going to line up my Velcro pretty close to the edge, and I'm just gonna stitch this Velcro down along that opening so we can close the opening and stitch the Velcro at the same time. So I'm gonna start in the corner, go forward and back, go over that Velcro, go forward and back, and then I'm gonna hit this Velcro again, and then just, uh, sew a box around this Velcro so it will stay in place. And then when I get to the other end, other corner, after I've sewn my whole box, I'm actually going to put a little diagonal in it and then I can cut my threads. Some people like to put a full X in the box. You can kind of see here there's just one. It's totally up to you how to do it. So that's one side. So now I need to do the other side. So I've got my hooks on this side and my loops on that side. So we're gonna do the same thing, only this time we're just gonna sew the Velcro because we don't have an opening. So I'm just gonna sew my box around my Velcro. And then I'll put my um, diagonal from one corner to the other corner and that just kind of I don't know it just helps that velcro really stay especially if you use something a lot it has a lot you use it often um, the velcro can start kind kind of coming loose all right
so the two sides meet in the middle and there's my cozy so we can pull them off this guy see how he goes put him in the middle wrap them around and there's my cute little coffee cozy now this is a fun project you could totally personalize it put someone's name on here in vinyl or embroidery you could um, add an extra design if you have a fabric that has a border print that's a fun way to use it on the coffee cozy so there's lots of choices on how you can customize and personalize this fun little project um, but it's a great way to add a little something to your kitchen and make as a gift for someone without spending tons of money I hope you enjoyed this project make sure to get the pattern in the description and don't forget to subscribe to So Simple Home so you can get all our great videos. And you can check out SoSimpleHome.com for a lot more sewing patterns and tutorials. We'll see you next time.